So since I was very young, one of my uh, favorite things to eat was uh, chips and dip. We had it at all of our family's holiday gatherings, and I uh, really enjoyed it, and it was my uh, favorite food. And then one day I found out that it was actually clam dip. There's clams in this dip, which I think is totally gross. But I've been eating it for so long that I didn't want to give it up, and so I thought, okay, that can be like one of my exotic things that I do. I eat uh, clam dip. And so now I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay, so what you'll need are two cans of minced or diced clams, one ball or hunk of garlic, uh, Worcestershire sauce. What is it? Worcestershire sauce one onion, cream cheese, Philadelphia cream cheese, one third less fat because it's the softest kind, and a bag of potato chips. Milk is optional uh, to soften it at the end. So the first thing you want to do is take your two creamed cheeses. <laughs> I'm going to laugh the whole time because there's plenty of people looking at me and smiling right now. Into the bowl. This is kind of gross. And next you want to take one can of the clams and open it up and put the entire thing in the bowl, juice and all. So I've been told that it's always a good idea to rinse the top of your can with water to get rid of any dirt. This is a can opener. Oh, so don't be surprised if when you open it up, it's real. Oh, it smells like fish. Try not to cut yourself, and then you dump the entire thing in the bowl. Oh, that's. It looks really gross. Then with the second can, you're actually going to want to drain out the juice. I recommend doing this into a sink. And then just scoop all of the clams without juice. To it. So next you want to add two decent uh, sized cloves of garlic from your garlic ball. I'm not really sure how garlic works. <laughs> think what these little sections are, are cloves. This would be your clove of garlic. And I'm supposed to add two decent sized cloves. See, now they're all different sizes, so I don't really know if I'm like splitting some in half or what's going on here. I'll say that these are two decent sized cloves of garlic. Um, I usually have like a roller thingy that like a plastic thing where you go like this and get all this stuff off, but I lost it. Um, so I'm going to use my hands and see if that works. Ow. Th this is not a good idea. Okay, I've been told <laughs> that I don't actually need to, like, roll the things off. Because I guess I've bypassed that stuff somehow. Oh, wait. You see, there's stuff that's coming off. Just supposed to hit it. <laughs> like with the flat part of the knife. Yeah. <laughs> There's like juice coming out. Then you take your garlic press. You insert the garlic into the garlic press. And you press it in. Are you serious? That's all that comes out? There's like nothing in there. Then you take the other one.
and you put it in like this. More came out that time. Next, you add three quarters of one quarter cup onion, which you must chop up. I'm not really sure how deep I need to go. I'm just going to go until it's all one color. I don't know if there's like an onion peeler tool or something, but I'm just using my hands. That's just a tiny knife. <laughs> so, uh, to cut your knife, you should, to uh, cut up your onion, you should cut on a cutting board, unless you don't have one, in which case you can just cut on the counter. Um, I'm going to cut off this end here, I think. And this end. Um, knives are very important to chefs. As, as with any fruit or vegetable, um, at some point in the process you should wash it. <laughs> I think I've gone through enough layers on the top that I can actually start using it, right? Yes. So, I think the way I've seen it done... I'm gonna get all this off. Maybe I don't need to get all this off. I feel like I'm wasting a lot. Um, is that you, uh, you like, slice in and then you go like this. So I'm gonna try to do that. Where's all this supposed to go? So as you're cutting, uh, you don't want to cut with the knife coming towards you. Um, you want to cut with the knife going away from you. Uh, so it also helps to have something to, to catch the thing that you're cutting. Um, I'm using the measuring cup. Um, I don't know if you can see, I have a few pieces not in the measuring cup because when I first started I didn't have it there and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so I'm going to cut. Ooh. <laughs> you may have read myths that Watch onions will make you cry and tear up, and that is true. So I know I said earlier that you said have something to catch it in, but I'm going to start cutting like this. Because I think that's how you really do it. And watch where your fingers are at all times. And they say that cooking is a very messy business. So you need three quarters of a quarter of a cup. <laughs> so as you can see, I made it way too much. A quarter of a cup is about here. So three quarters of a quarter of a cup is about here. So I'm going to take a lot of this out. When you're measuring, remember, always go by the bottom of the meniscus, which is where the material bubbles down. Okay, put the onion in. And then you want to do three to four good shakes of the Worcestershire sauce. One, two, three, four. And then mix it up pretty hard. And it's gonna be really gross. But it tastes good once you get it all mixed up. Um, I would suggest, I have three younger sisters and I usually just have one of them make it for me. <laughs> because this is really disgusting. I mean, this is just something that you should never make uh, the first time you eat it. Just have someone else make it when you're not looking, and then just eat the final product. It's like if you, I mean, any kind of meat, like you would never kill the animal first and then eat it. You'd want it to be on a bun. I think you just keep mixing until it's not like part solid and part liquid and it all becomes a plasma. And I think we're done. And so uh, if it's not soft enough when you're finished, you can add some uh, milk, which is optional. 
Uh, it doesn't change the flavor, it just changes the uh, consistency of it. Um, and in terms of taste, you can add more garlic, onion, or Worcestershire sauce um, as needed. So uh, let's uh, open up the bag of chips and give it a taste. We'll add some more ingredients if we need to, but probably not because it's probably perfect. And um, yeah, we'll enjoy it. And that's how you make chip and dip. Chips and dip, chips and dip. <laughs> Chicken and ketchup.